The Salty Dog update for Don't Start Together has recently moved to the main branch, bringing a smorgasbord of sea-related content. The update was released alongside an animated short, giving a brief preview into the update's content. Everything introduced in this update will be retrofitted into any pre-existing worlds upon launching them, saving players from having to start over. First of all, a new mini biome now appears dotted randomly throughout the ocean. This area consists of strange salty sculptures, sometimes in the shape of what appears to be a petrified person. Mining them will yield salt, a new resource with a number of applications. Salt can firstly be refined into a new spice at a portable grinding mill if you're playing as Wally. Three raw salt crystals can be granted to two seasoning salt, and applying these to a dish will add a 25% boost to its healing amount. When combined with a high healing dish, salt seasoning can add a nice extra boost without increasing the time required for the healing. Since there's only one other real use for the salt, this spice is a decent way to use up your saline stockpile. Speaking of, the second use for salt is crafting the salt box, a structure made with 10 salt crystals, one blue gem, and one cut stone. The box has nine slots and is not flammable. Items stored inside it will rot at one fourth of the default rate. In other words, they'll last four times longer than if they were stored elsewhere. However, the salt box only accepts food items that are cookable, i.e. raw ingredients, and are not deployable, i.e. seeds. Disallowing deployables has a higher priority than allowing cookable ingredients. For example, honey will not be allowed as it's not cookable, whereas raw meat will be. While traversing the salty isles, beware. For hungry isopods known as cookie cutters, wait to take a bite out of your allegedly delicious boat. Cookie cutters float around the salty structures and leap onto your craft should you venture too close. Although they only have 100 health and can thus be killed easily, there are often many of them, all eager to drill holes in your innocent vessel. Be sure to bring a weapon that can kill them in two hits or fewer, and at least a few extra boat patches. Thankfully, the leaks that they spring only deal one boat health per second, considerably less than the amount drained from impacting land at high speeds, but being caught without boat patches will certainly result in your boat's demise. When killed, cookie cutters drop a monster meat and a chance for a shard of their shell. Collecting four carapaces and combining them with a rope will result in the cookie cutter cap, a vile yet protective headpiece. The cap protects from 70% of incoming damage and an additional 35% wetness protection, more than any other head armor equipment. As a side note, I have to say that I love the design of cookie cutters. It's a very Don't Starve-esque design, being a parody of a real-life creature while also being inherently creepy and unsettling in nature. This kind of stuff is what I'm craving to see from new updates, so a gold star to clay for this inclusion. But the main attraction of this update, the largest and most threatening inclusion, is none other than the dreaded Malbatross. At the center of each salt stack assortment is a shoal of currently uncatchable deep sea fish. When first approaching one of these shoals, there's a 25% chance that the Malbatross will appear. Every three days where a Malbatross has not been fought, the chances for all shoals will reset. The chances also reset 5 to 15 days after the beastly bird perishes. Upon initially appearing, the almighty Trost has initially neutral towards the player, triggered upon being attacked. Once combat has begun, the bird will attack you with three main moves. The first is a basic strike that deals 75 damage towards players, and deals 5 damage to boats alongside pushing them away. Once the boss reaches two thirds of its maximum health, it will dive and attempt to flee from the players. During this attack, you'll need to hit it with a ranged weapon in order to retain its aggro, otherwise the fight will end. This attack is only performed once. The boss's third and final maneuver can only be performed when it's below one third health, in which the avian menace will swoop over the player, dealing damage and destroying any mast unfortunate enough to be in its way. This attack can be performed multiple times. Upon ramming into a mast, the Malbatross has a chance to drop some of its feathers. Additionally, every time it takes damage it will also have four independent 5% chances to drop an extra feather. After its 5000 health is whittled away, the beastly bird will drop 7 meat, 3 to 4 feathers, 2 to 3 blue gems, a 5% chance for a yellow gem, its bill, and the blueprints for two unique items. Lots of feathers can be farmed by attacking the bird with a weapon such as a weather pane. It's recommended to do this at least once in order to amass enough feathers for the new items. The Malbatross bill is the boss's first unique drop and only has one use, as a more proficient ore. With much more durability than either of the two existing ores, and slightly more propulsion, the Malbatross's bill is a direct upgrade to the other two, albeit somewhat unimpressive for a boss drop. The two blueprints dropped by the fearsome bird are for a new ingredient and a new equipment. Feathery canvases are built with six Malbatross feathers and one silk, and currently only have one use, which is crafting the new sail, although it is plausible that the canvases will receive new uses in the future. Winged masts are made with three driftwood, three lengths of rope, and four feathery canvases. When deployed, it gives a much higher speed boost than a normal sail, and takes longer to deploy, but with a shorter time to withdraw. The winged mask is so quick that there isn't really any need to use more than one. Be especially careful when sailing with them, as it's much easier to crash your beloved vessel. While this new update has certainly been interesting, I feel that it's certainly lacking in some areas. 
For one, there is still ultimately no point in defeating the Albatross, minus for completionism or simply for fun. There is still only really one thing in the ocean of interest, that being the Lunar Island, and while it is great to see some more content in other areas of the ocean, there still isn't that much considering the vastness of the open seas. So hopefully the next updates bring some more use to the Winged Mask and Malbatross build by adding more content to the ocean. As of now, the updates don't really seem to be adding content that will lead to something more penultimate. Instead, they kind of just seem to be including random tidbits that don't really fit in anywhere. But of course, all these things could be tied together when a new update is introduced, and hopefully it does. Anyway, that's pretty much all there is to the Salty Dog update. Be sure to leave a comment with your thoughts on the update and on the video. Additionally, Hallowed Knights will return in a couple weeks with some spooky new surprises, including a completely new character. It's been confirmed by a dev that this new character is in fact not one of the many unimplemented characters, which sadly means no Waverly or Wilton just yet, but hopefully there'll still be a fun new addition to Don't Stop Together. Thanks for watching, and I guess I'll see you next time.